Okay, well I just want to give a quick worked example of how to find bases of subspaces spanned by vectors, as we were talking about in class today. So the kind of question that you'll often find yourself having to solve is, you've got this set of vectors, in my case there are five of them, and we want to find a collection of those that span the subspace spanned by those things. That means if you take all linear combinations of V1 through to V5, can we find a subset of those Vs that give us the same set of possible outcomes. Okay, so as we talked about in class, the way to do this is to first stick them into a matrix. So you stick all your vectors inside a matrix, side by side. Okay, I'm just sticking them all in. 1, negative 3, negative 2, negative 5, 8, and 4. And all we have to do to find out which of these vectors we need is to reduce our matrix to row echelon form. Okay, so I'm going to do two operations. I'll do my usual row 2 goes to row 2 plus 2 row 1, just following my normal Gaussian elimination procedure. Row 3 goes to row 3 plus row 1. So that will do my first two. 1, 2, 3, 1, negative 5. 0, I'm adding on 2 row 1, so I'll add on 4 will give me a 1, add on 6 will give me 2, add on 2 will give me a negative 1, and add on a negative 10 will give me a negative 2. And in the bottom row we're just adding row 1 on, so we'll get a 0, we'll get a 1, we'll get a 2, we'll get a negative 1, and we'll get a negative 1. Okay, we just need one more row operation, we need to clear away underneath our pivot in the second row. So the row operation will be row 3 becomes row 3 minus row 2. So we're now using this pivot to clear away this value down here. So the top row will remain the same, as will the next one, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. And then we're just subtracting off the row, so we'll get 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we've hit row echelon form. Okay, and at that point we're pretty much finished. All we have to do from here is we have to say, okay, well, we find our pivots. Our pivot columns are columns 1, 2, and 5. So, here, let's just mark them with little asterisks. Pivots are in columns <coughs> 1, 2, and 5. So, <coughs> span of these vectors is also equal to the column space of our matrix A that we formed along the way. is equal to the span of just V1, V2, and V5. We can also say that V1, V2, V5 form a basis for the column space of A, and that just to practice using all these equivalent pieces of terminology, and that the rank of A is equal to 3. Okay, Remember, the rank of A is the number of pivots, which also equals the dimension of the column space of A. Okay, and that's all we really need to do. If we wanted to go further and find the null space of that matrix, so let's say we want to continue on sorry, in our notation we're using just a single L there, the null space of A. We need to just continue on with our row operations and take it down to reduced row echelon form. So in this case we're now imagining we're solving ax equals 0. So imagine there's a column of zeros augmented on the end. So I'll continue on my steps. I want to clear above my pivots now, so I'll just do row 
1 becomes row 1 plus 5 row 3 row 2 becomes row 2 plus 2 row 3 Okay, so nothing in the first few entries is going to be touched. 1, 2, 3, 1. That will become a 0. 0, 1, 2, negative 1. That will become a 0 as well. And last but not least, we just need to clear that 2 away from above our other pivot. Okay, we've got 0 down here too. So the row operation we need is row 1 becomes row 1 minus 2. Sorry, minus 2, row 2. Okay, so we'll have a 1 here, we'll have a 0 here, we'll have a negative 1 here, we'll have a 3 here, and the rest is the same as it was before. So to find the basis for the null space, we just need to write the general solution to ax equals 0, or the general solution to a homogeneous equation. So write down general solution to ax equals 0. Okay, so again we've still got pivots in 1, 2 and 5 positions, so we'll write down our basic variables as functions of our free variables x3, x4 are free. So x1 is going to equal x3 minus 3x4. x2 is going to equal um, negative 2x3 plus x4. And x5, just like the example we did in class, is going to be equal to 0. So if we let x3 equal some parameter s, x4 equal some parameter t, we can also write this as s minus 3t and this one is negative 2s plus t. Finally, we write down a general solution. We'll have x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5 equals s. So we have 1 for x1. We have negative 2 for x2. 1 for x3. Nothing for x4, nothing for x5. And then we have t times negative 3 for x1, 1 for x2, nothing for x3, 1 for x4, and 0 for x5. So null space of A is spanned by the two vectors we just found. is of dimension 2. Two. Okay, so notice also that the rank of our matrix, you can see by exactly the way we work this, the rank of our matrix A, remember that's the number of pivots, plus the dimension of the null space, always equals the number of columns. Okay, so just fancy words for saying number of pivots, number of free variables always equals the number of columns. Okay, and that's that.